My name is Hannah Smedley. I am 20 years old and I am a singer-songwriter based in Adelaide. When I write a song, I would start off with, you know, that the, the first note and then the ending note, and then I just join it together um, on the piano. When I started writing Plastic Jewelry, I just had this feeling of like, I feel like people don't look at me like I'm me. I felt like, you know, a lot of people didn't see me as Hannah. They just saw me as, you know, someone who's on the spectrum. Shirts and braided hair still ain't hiding who I truly am. I never taught her how to play piano. I never taught her to sing. It was even on just on the ukulele. That's how I started writing music. I can't read music very well, but I can hear it. I just started slowly playing it around my mum and I was around uh, her friend and they were saying, who's this song from? I really like it. And I was like, oh, I wrote it. And then they were like, oh my gosh, you need to record that. It was a discovery with Hannah. We'd be discovering new things as she grew because we didn't know that she was ASD or on the spectrum. She had this thing with singing. She, that's how she learned to sing, but she had some real difficulties with language. It took her a long, long time to actually speak and people hear and understand her. She certainly walked to her own beat, not anybody else's. I did work at a law firm and at first that was really good. It was exciting. She was meeting new people. It became really difficult when her supervisor took a disliking to her. I don't think she really fully got Hannah. Felt like I wasn't important. Uh, I'm not asking to be nur like nurtured in that workplace. I'm asking for respect. She knew that that wasn't the place for her. So I am a vocal coach at Lift Up Voices. It's a music studio. You go in there and you have the access to record your own music. I actually started going Lift Up Voices as an artist. We had a position become available um, for her to join our coaching team. Hannah has a handful of artists that she coaches and mentors each week. Um, and I think one of the special parts about what she does here is that she's able to bring her lived experience um, into the studio and a lot of her um, artists are young women who are looking for that mentorship and that role model and she really is able to connect with them and provide them support in a way that some of the other coaching staff can't. Music is not just my job, it's also a personal therapy for me. It helps me communicate better with people. Singing in our home, we do a lot of it in the car. That's kind of like a release for us. We just build out a tune. I've got a convertible and the roof comes off and we just go for it. There are times for her where it's very personal and I know that she's going through a hard time because she will disappear and she will write songs about something that she hasn't understood and trying to make sense of her world. Music has been my safe haven and helped me through very difficult times in my life. Hannah's probably been through a lot for a young girl. She um, was very close to her brother and he passed away six months ago. She would watch us cry and, and, and wouldn't and would want to, didn't know when was the right time to cry, when was it? So music for her was a beautiful expression. Aaron had struggled a lot, but he, um, you know, was my biggest supporter. You know, I've written a song about him and I'm not sure what to call it yet, but he would be so proud. I 
won this competition. It was for the Civic Park Carols. I just sang Oh Holy Night uh, in front of the judges and I kind of just wanted to, like, instead of singing it, I wanted to look at that judge, giving that connection, that magic, I guess you could say. She was picked to perform in front of 45,000 people because she sang it in a way that no one else sang it. I was the opening act and Oh my goodness, <laughs> like I was so terrified that I didn't realise I was terrified. As soon as I saw the crowd, I was like, oh, this is it. <laughs> when it comes to writing songs, it's not, it's not easy. The advice I would give to people with disabilities who are passionate with music and, you know, recording and songwriting is that, you know, do it your own way. What I've learned from Hannah is that it's okay for you to do things your way. You don't actually have to fit into that little round hole. I've later realised that autism is nothing to be ashamed of. It's a gift that I'm very proud to have. I think inclusion really needs to be disability-led. So that's why it's great to see people like Hannah um, creating um, pathways for that to happen. As I go further in my music career, I don't want to be known as the, the singer, the artist who is on the autism spectrum. I would like to be known as Hannah, who is a singer-songwriter and I'm here to inspire whether I'm on the autism spectrum or not. So.